Hello everybody, Silver Picker here, and today's video is one that I am super pumped for because we are going back to basics with a classic Silver Picker mystery coin grab bag exchange. Now, if you're new to the channel or you're unfamiliar with that concept, essentially what I do is with my Patreon patrons, I do a sort of Secret Santa style grab bag exchange in which I create a mystery coin grab bag full of coins, precious metals, and all sorts of other fun stuff, and I send it out to one of my Patreon patrons at random. Then they in turn create their own mystery coin grab bag and send it to a different patron and so on and so forth until one of them creates one for me and sends it to me. And that's what we have right here. Now in this video we're going to be seeing both sides of the coin no pun intended, we're going to be taking a look at the grab bag that I put together for one of my patrons as well as unboxing this bad boy and seeing what I got in return. Now you will notice that there is a plastic wrap around this package and it's because the package opened during shipping. You can see that there's actually some quarters over here that uh, have spilled out. Now I'm hoping that the post office put this bag on prophylactically and that it was only a small hole because hopefully nothing is actually missing. But hey, you know what, these things happen, don't cry over a couple spilt quarters. Now, there's one other thing while we're on the topic of Patreon before we get to opening all these grab bags, and that is, what do I do with the money that I get from Patreon? When you guys support my channel, what do I do with that money? Well, I've been getting a lot of feedback on how a lot of my up-close shots of coins are not in focus and they're just not high quality enough. So what did I do? I took several months of Patreon funds and I bought a $600 plus dollar macro lens. That's right, I bought a brand new lens for my camera and we are going to be checking that out today for the first time. Now what's gonna be interesting is I actually shot the footage from the grab bag I put together with my old regular lens. And we're going to be shooting this grab bag with the new lens. I wanna see what you guys think in the comments. Now, if you like my videos and wanna support my channel and help me make my videos better and better just like I did here, well, the links for Patreon are below. Now enough with the jibber jabber, let's check out the grab bag that I put together and then we will crack into this bad boy. Alright, I'm going to start with the easy stuff. So right here we have a half a pound of mixed world coins and most of these are probably from like the 60s, 70s and 80s. Nothing too amazing but I did sneak in some coins from earlier years uh, such as the 1920s, 30s and maybe even the late 19th century. So these will be fun to go through and uh, I didn't look at them specifically but uh, this is going to be fun for him because I know he does like lots of uh, world coins as well. And, well, we've also got a couple of other interesting world coins, and they are three Russian commemorative coins. Now, I actually got these in a grab bag uh, a couple of years ago, and if you're interested in seeing that, it was a really interesting grab bag from Russia. You can check it out over here. And they're very cool coins. They even have edge lettering and everything. They're, they're very, very awesome. None of them are silver, but they are really cool pieces of history, and I think he will enjoy them. Speaking of Russian coins, I did include another coin from that grab bag which turned out to be incredibly valuable and really awesome. This is a two kopeck coin from, do you see that date? 1824. 1824. It has a little crack on it, but these sell incredibly well on eBay even in this condition. I've seen them on eBay for even worse that go for more than what I'm valuing this at, but really, really cool. Look at that. Two kopecks and it's just such an awesome piece of history. I know that he's gonna like this one. And for some American coins, we have 10 assorted 1943 steel cents over here, some in better condition than others, but he will find some use for these, I am sure. All right, I'll show you some silver. There's gonna be a lot of silver, but to start us off, we have this 1924 really nicely toned mercury dime. This toning has some rainbow to it. It has a nice little hue, and it is a fantastic little piece of silver, but don't you worry, we've got plenty more silver where that came from. For example, right over here, we've got ourselves an 1888 Morgan Silver Dollar. Now, this is a Morgan Silver Dollar with some issues to it, so it's more just like bullion. There is a little engraving here that somebody did. I can't tell what it says. If anybody can read that, I'd be very interested to know. But basically, Morgan Silver Dollar, you can't beat that. They still go for 30, 32 bucks even when they are culls. And this one's not a cull, it's just a little bit, uh, let's just say customized. It's a customized silver dollar. And we've got a couple of other little scents over here. We have a Steely that's in great shape, a 1920D, 
and a 1916. So I don't know if he's doing a US uh, penny set, but if he is, those will be good additions for that. We also have over here, this is a bonus, this is a Silver Picker Squad sticker that was actually designed and printed by another patron, Jason. Now, it wouldn't be a Silver Picker grab bag if I didn't include at least one Utah gold back. So here I am including a 2019 one Utah gold back. These are actually getting quite scarce because they have been literally the most popular uh, new gold product uh, in like the last decade. They are sold out everywhere, they're selling for crazy prices, and the 2019s are getting increasingly harder to find. So we got one of those. A 1979 US proof set and these ones are cool in particular because unlike some of the later ones this one actually has the Susan B Anthony in there as well. So we've got ourselves not just the cent nickel dime quarter and half but also the dollar coin. Really really nice. And we've got ourselves a silver certificate. Now this is not just any silver certificate. It looks pretty ratty, right? It's not in great shape, but it is indeed a star note. And star note silver certificates are definitely more rare and desirable than the uh, run of the mill, you know, 1957s that we all have. This guy is in fantastic condition. I wouldn't call it crisp or, uh, you know, mint, but it is in fantastic shape. You can see, wow, look at that beautiful, beautiful green. Now you know why they called them greenbacks back in the day. And this is a $2 US note from the 1953 series. Definitely very cool. As a Canadian, I'm not sure if he has that. And the second to last coin which you see over here is a rather controversial one. It is a 10 Reichsfennig from Nazi Germany from 1942 and you can see the swastika symbol there. Generally I do not sell these coins because I'm happy to have them go to a collector that I know will preserve them for the right reasons, for the historical value as opposed to revering Nazi ideology or neo-Nazism or anything like that. So generally I don't sell them but I do know Bruce personally through the Discord and uh, having messaged him many times and talked to him many times. So I am not worried about that and I think he'll find this an interesting piece. And to balance that stinking Nazi coin out, we have our last coin here, which is a 25th anniversary coin of the founding of the State of Israel from 1973. Look at that. This coin is one that I love. I actually have a few of these in my personal collection. The design of this is just so awesome. On this side of the coin, you see an image of Israel's Declaration of Independence, which is super cool. It's a very iconic document. And over here, you see one of the seals of Israel. It says 10 liras in Hebrew. That was the coinage of the day. Today, it's the new shekel, of course. And you can see it says Israel's 25th anniversary. All right, so that is the grab bag that I put together for Bruce. I think he's gonna love it. I think this is a really, really cool mix of coins. But enough with the jibber jabber. Let's take a look at the grab bag that was sent to me by one of my patrons. All right, so we are ready for the unboxing of what was sent to me. So first we gotta get it out of this plastic bag and then we'll take a look at what is outside the bag and then we'll find out what's in the bag. So. Okay, so we've got these quarters and we've got the rest of this grab bag. So why don't actually, why don't I just open this up and take a sneak peek in here. Okay, there's a bunch of stuff. I see this is uh, probably where the quarters fell out of. And you know what, I'm just gonna finish unboxing this and then we will go through each item one by one. All right, all sorts of goodies, all sorts of goodies. All right, we will take a look at these with the new lens. All right, so it looks like the first batch of coins are 2021s. We have 12 over here as well as an additional 2021P over here. They all look to be in uncirculated condition. They're really, really nice. I don't really collect modern quarters like this, but look at that. What a beautiful design, beautiful design. We've got ourselves a World War II first day issue set of stamps. This one's from 1994, as well as another envelope. And this one is a World War II relic, essentially. You can see that this was mail that was sent from outside the United States to the US and you can see that the censorship department of the United States government actually opened up the letter and read it to make sure there was no subversive information in here. We also have silver and amber pendant. Okay, wow, very nice. This is very nice. I will end up giving this as a gift, I am sure. That is super cool. Do you know someone born with a silver spoon in their mouths? Well, I can guess what's inside here. Wow, very cool. 
It's an Israel spoon. Very, very cool. Who can guess in the comments below why she sent me an Israel spoon? This is super cool. Really, really nice. Next up, we have an item that blends in almost exactly with the background, and it is... Oh, very nice. Very nice. We've got ourselves a Canada typeset from 1968. So I believe that means this is silver. I'll have to double check that. You'll see that reflected in the prices. Obviously, you guys are following along in the corner over here to see the values. Next we have as a, f oh, they're numbered. They're numbered. Okay. Well, this is number four. I'm going to have to, and I opened up number seven already. So let's find number one. Okay. So this is number one. It says it's Leavenworth, Washington, not Kansas. We are year round Alpine Christmas village. Yeah, I know. The candies came from a factory 16 kilometers down the road in Kashmir, Washington, enjoy. Now, I do see that it opened up, and I think because it opened in the mail, there are actually ants in this. I see a couple of ants crawling on this, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to try the applets and collets value pack. It does look good, but sometimes you just gotta pass. And hey, I don't blame the folks that sent this to me. This is, uh, Amanda and Alex. Uh, I don't blame you guys at all. This stuff happens. In any case, let's see what is in package number one. All right, package number one. Looks like we've got some, ah, Leavenworth Washington gear. That is cool. So we got ourselves a bottle opener. We've got ourselves a little pin. Leavenworth Fun Token. Cool. Thank you. Okay, this is one of the things that happens when you open these things live. This is not the first thing I saw, but it says, Max, please open the envelopes in order. They are numbered. I am responsible for all the puns. Amanda had nothing to do with the labels. Alex Taub. Thank you. Okay, number two. We're back on track. Every grab bag has things to make you wonder. Okay. Let's see what we've got over here. I hear like nuts and bolts or something. Ah, not nuts and bolts, but huh, it's pretty funny that I said nuts and bolts because copper is, uh, you know, more of a nuts and bolts type metal than gold or silver. So we got ourselves a copper bar. These are really nice and you know that I do not advocate these as an investment and I think they put those in there on purpose because they know that. That's why I said to make you think. So we got two of those. This is really cool. This is a like a, a kind of like a hobo penny style thing. We got ourselves a skull and crossbones that has been stamped into a penny. This is really cool. I've never seen anything like this. Very, very cool. I have no idea the value on there. That is super, super cool. And in that same package, we have a bunch more coins. We have a self-graded MS-63 bicentennial quarter. We have a self-graded XF-1937 Buffalo nickel. We've got ourselves a 1945 Canada five cent coin. We've got ourselves a Mexico 1989 1000 peso bronze something or other. Nice. And we have a graded coin. It is a 2000D official US mint millennium coinage set 2000D Sacagawea quarter. Now we know that ICG is not really much of a grading company, but it is still worth a couple bucks. Now we're up to number three, and at the end, I'm going to show a display of everything that we opened all together, so you get a bird's eye view. My doggy ate the envelope, but left the coins for you. Ha 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 ha. All right, let's see what we got. Ah, okay, I see. We got ourselves two mint sets. Let's see what they are. We got ourselves a 1989, it looks like, excuse me, a 1980, as well as another 1980, makes sense, and these are the P and D. All right, we're back to number four. As a former anthropology archeology span professor, I used to give my students a Roman coin to date, locate on a map, and learn about who might have used them, traditional purchasing power, and guess why they were buried. Oh, this is gonna be cool. This is gonna be really cool. Now, I'm going to be like one of your students, and I'm going to just guess that this is from uh, 
uh, it's probably a Greek coin, a Saloniki Greek coin, and it's probably a Constantine the Great from, oh, I'd say around 306 to 337 CE. Uh, how did I do on that? What do you guys think? You think I uh, got that spot on? All right, number five. Number five is a real hul hulking envelope. It says, may have a northern issue. Yes, I collect Canadian silver and other coins. All right. Holy moly, we got ourselves a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, we got a 25 cent coin from 2003, it looks like. Excuse me, 2002, and it is a commemorative Canadian quarter. Nice. We got ourselves a 1907 Canadian five cent piece. This might go in my Canadian typeset. That would be pretty cool. We'll have to check that out. Ooh, another silver coin. This is a 50% silver coin. Love this one. Absolutely love this one. I think it's a Lynx on there. Oh, I'm loving all this silver. Loving all this silver. 10 cents from 1906. Some of this stuff really might go in my typeset. We'll have to check on that. All right, all right. We got ourselves a big old goose. Canada goose over here, Centennial Dollar, 80% silver, 1967. That's a beautiful coin. Got ourselves another quarter over here. This one is a 1999 commemorative. Pretty nice. Over here, another 1999 commemorative. Also very nice. Man, Canada, you guys did a great job with your uh, modern commemoratives. A one cent coin. Ah, 2011, it's the last year of the penny. In Canada, they got rid of the one cent coins, believe it or not. 25 cents, another 2009. This one's the women's hockey. This one looks like it might be silver. Yep, 80% silver, 1964 dime, and it is in fabulous shape. That one might replace what I've got in my typeset. Okay, another 25 cent coin, Exploring Canada, 1999. This is a Canadian breast cancer awareness coin. Look at that, very cool with the colorization. Another silver coin, 50 to 80% silver, 1967 dime. Got ourselves what looks like a one cent coin. This one's a little tough to see through the plastic on the two by two, but it's a 1943 one cent King George coin from the World War II era. And last but not least, we've got ourselves a really, really nice 80% silver Canadian half dollar. I'm loving that they sent me all this Canadian silver. Now, some of this stuff I'm hoping to put in my typeset and the other stuff I am going to likely trade away because there is a lot of people out there that are searching for Canadian silver and I get requests for that all the time. Now, this one's not numbered, but it looks like we've got ourselves another mint set. So I'll just take a look at that one quickly. This one's a 1981. We've got the P and D as well. That one does have the original envelope it came in, unlike the other one. Nice. Number six, not a stack of pancakes, but can be stacked. And this is it, this is it. What do we have inside? The first is a 100 kroner from 1983. Let's check out the reverse. Very cool, it looks like it has a 100 kroner face value. Nice. And last but not least, we've got ourselves, it says, interesting, Nyasverge Delaware, 19, 1638 to 1988, 100 kroner. What on earth is this? Okay, we're gonna have to do some research. I would love for somebody to put in the comments what on earth this thing is. But anyway, that is the last of it. Okay, now as I was setting this up to show off all the goodies, I realized there was another one. It didn't have a number on it. It says it's not round, but it gets around. All right, let's check it out. Wow, come on, come on. One ounce silver, love the pun, love the pun, wow. Look at that. How do you top that off? An ounce of silver on top of all of this. This is a fan-freaking-tastic grab bag. It has so much variety. It's got stuff from all over the world. It has coins as modern as 2021 and as old as uh, the third century CE. It's got exonumia. It's got, it's got a freaking spoon. It's got everything you could possibly want. 
Alex, Amanda, thank you both so, so much. I really hope everybody enjoyed watching this video. Now, I'm still obviously getting used to the new lens. It wasn't perfect, but I think you can see the difference uh, when I did get the shots right, how much better and crisper it looked. So again, if you're interested in supporting my Patreon, the links are below. Anyone who does already support my Patreon, you know how much I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoyed. I got a lot more awesome stuff coming down the pike. So stay tuned and until then, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons, especially to all of those who participated in this amazing grab bag exchange. If you guys want to get in on the action, well, you know where the links are and I can't wait to meet you personally in the Discord.